good afternoon students happy to see you all once again good afternoon sir and good afternoon team uh, our given again welcoming you all to this conclave series that is the spectrum virtual conclave of mit sd 2023 today is the last session for the day and we have with us mr ambikesh vyas sir sir as a seasoned professional in the combined roles of chro and cso at dr b lal clinical laboratory at jaipur rajasthan he brings a unique blend of strategic leadership and people centric hr management skills to drive organizational success with a deep understanding of business dynamics and a passion for cultivating a high performance workforce he excel in aligning hr strategies with the overall strategic goals of the organization with a strategic mindset effective communication and focus on continuous improvement he dedicated to create an environment where employees thrive contribute to organizational growth and drive long term success uh, we are so happy to have you sir for this uh, when uh, spectrum that is the virtual conclave of mit sd 2023 and happy to see you and over to you now sir thank you right so uh, thank you ashna so uh, to start with i think uh, let me thank ashna professor bhagishri for giving this opportunity to interact with this generation because uh, what i see gen z is happen to know more than us what we know almost 15 years back so uh, this is something a privilege for me as well as uh, uh, a learning experience all together fine so uh, so good afternoon all ladies and gentlemen uh, so all those who are fighting a uh, post lunch slump and becoming like a true champion right now so i stand before you and uh, that's a responsibility and task given to me to uh, keep you all awake so this is uh, the ultimate responsibility on my shoulder right now for the next 90 minutes so let's shake off all tryptophan induced uh, drowsiness and uh, let's discuss on the reason why we are all here so uh, with this i think uh, i should uh, tell more about uh, what actually happened up before 10 days so um, professor bhageshri called me almost like 15 20 days back earlier so mentioning about the what what exactly uh, your role would be and how you will going to address our students so so honestly uh, this has become uh, a really uh, challenge for me, a real challenge for me because uh, honestly uh, the topic was something which was not very much uh, uh, i i see clear to me that change because the, again there's a constant change happening every time so even what i have prepared 15 days before would going to get obsolete today so certainly this topic is very challenging and uh, as and when we communicate and we actually start acting on those actionables time passes on and then the new technology new systems will come in place so what i am speaking may become an obsolete after 10 days 15 days one year two year down the line but yes this topic was quite interesting and this is something which is uh, i believe uh, uh, a driver for everyone's success uh, let it be organization or maybe the individual so uh, the intention is to share the my views on uh, efficiently managing the organization change and uh, adapting to the dynamic business landscape so uh, the day was uh, may 2nd 2020 what i recall uh, when entire like phone whatsapp fb insta were flooded with the the same crisis which which happened almost 2 3 years back so people talking about crisis the covid and that was the pretty darkest moment i have seen in in the life the covid swept through all those all the entire world like a storm and then leaving uncertainty in its wake people were rushing to hospitals people were like uh, in the uncertain conditions there was sudden change in the life the entire lockdown happened so uh, i represent the organization dr bilal clinical lab where uh, we are into the diagnostic and it was like a responsibility to take that challenge in at that course of time so um, the may 2nd 2020 we were all waiting for government approval to to get that testing done at, at our lab 
so it was like what 2:45 pm afternoon and uh, we were all preparing for for the fight against this virus through our training technology tools resources and for we be actually prepared ourselves on that day prior to government approval when the day finally came in and the time was like around 3:30 we got an approval from uh, from the government for the covid testing so uh, so once we received that testing we actually uh, circulated the message to those uh, key customers key stakeholders the so corporate hospitals that now we are live with our covid testing and uh, even after 14 minutes we got our first request we got our first request for the for the covid testing and before that we were actually discussing the entire uh, entire agenda the pr- process the plan the 13 how we were going to take in case if we get the first approval in case we get the first request for the covid so uh, we asked our team members to come forward for this request so we went we went to that room and we actually called 10 15 or people in our business and asked them this is the request and need right now let me know who who want to go there was a last man standing around almost like 5 uh, 10 minute 5 10 meters away from me raising hand and came near to me and then said keep i'll go for that sample collection his name was vishwas sharma um, vishwas um, doesn't mean ki uska naam vishwas hai isliye we trusted him but uh, with the confidence that he shown to us the calm face the feeling of uh, still there was a feeling of uncertainty in his on his face uh, he went for the first sample collection so uh, after first sample collection the second one third one and eventually it went to what like and next 90 days uh, we were like collecting 4000 samples every day uh, through the and this is a massive number that i can see this is a massive number um, when it comes to the jaipur rajasthan uh, we were serving and with a team of almost 150 uh, those celebrities the people were like were not taking any break they were not uh, having any kind of um, uh, gaps or week off they were working tirelessly day in day out the entire 24 hours while was were, were like power packed there were no extra perks also there were no extra salary that we have given to them eventually they were working so uh, the question here comes like uh, why people like vishwas do what they do where they come from who are they why they are risking life for others so one day i got this opportunity to meet vishwas after like 40 40 odd days ki uh, vishwas like you do like you are doing the same kind of work every time you are risking your life so why do what you do the answer was very very typical kind of answer the answer was uh, the same answer which i can expect from the person at this place he mentioned that i love my job and that is something everyone will say to any hr head when someone will go into ask you why you do what you do why you are here so he mentioned he love his job and that's not complicated that's not complicated to understand because there is a science behind this there is a reason behind this so human being uh, human being is 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 one of the complex machine is actually do things for the interest of his own uh, human being is actually a social animal which respond to the environment usually in our corporate business it actually work like this only okay? so corporate business also have the positive motivation and have the negative motivation and that actually drives the behavior of an organization since human being do exactly the same thing uh, how organization respond and how individual respond so when it comes to the individual there is a uh, there inside body you will and it's it's a basically science phenomena there there is a chemical based feeling which is released every time whenever there is a Uh, a response to any environmental factor there is a response to any external factor so this chemical based feeling is called emotions that emotion of maybe love hate fear happiness whatever it is but there are like emotions which which are flooded whenever you see any change in the 
system, change in the place, change in the environment. And these are the emotion which are driving force. These are the emotion which are the driving the behavior of an individual and whether it is good or bad, but human is actually innately wired with all those emotions. Now the emotions actually leads to two things. It may be a threat, it may be a reward. Now here comes the role of leadership. So let me share you my presentation um, around the same. So how the change leadership behaves in this scenario. I hope uh, this presentation is uh, visible to you. Ashna, can you give me a quick go ahead? In this yes, sir. yes, yes. So uh, we're talking about the role of leadership. The leadership is um, quite critical when it comes to any change, that it be the organization change or maybe any environmental change. We, we, we have seen the global pandemic. The entire global pandemic has supercharged the pace of change in the workplace. The people are actually redefining the workplace culture. The people are like driving the people transformation actually. The human resources working on some data decision. There are data driven insights which are thrown to the HR. And now HR is again with the, with the technology in place, they're working toward driving those transformation. People over here, people everywhere in this, in this industry are talking about culture, health, wellness, working model, all those kind of things. Now, this is something which I see a golden opportunity for the leader in it, as well as HR to regrow and rebuild the organization because whenever there is change happening, the change is happening for a cause. So uh, for me, the change management and everyone must have read in their theories, in their books, in any of the articles, what changes. It's basically a systematic process where you actually transit or transform and when it comes to the organization, it is more of a transformation of a goals, organization values and culture, the process, the system, technology, what so on. So the change leadership is the thing which we're going to speak a lot. The first with my agenda is change leadership. The second would be on the current business trend. Third would be we're discussing on those key drivers which actually bring the change and how you will to manage those change. Uh, I would also expect uh, in the session, if uh, anyone has a query or want to ask something in between, they are open to discuss and share. I think uh, I want to keep this discussion very two-way. Uh, it should not look like a monologue. So, Ashna, if uh, anyone has a query or feedback, to, uh, they can speak in between. Sure, sir. So, uh, the change leadership is nothing but it is basically a, 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 a statement uh, which which drives or which I'll say uh, uh, it's a, a kind of potential. It's a potential where all individual uh, works towards a common goal and that common goal can be a change, can be an organization. So leadership is nothing. It's not related to any position. It's, it's all about the potential to transform the entire organization, the potential to transform your people, the potential to navigate your people. So that's what change leadership is. And this is something which has to be a top priority post-pandemic. Uh, there has been a business which has actually run down just because they were not ready for the change. Post-pandemic, we have seen number of number of interventions happened just because pandemic has appeared. I'll take my example. I was not preferring to take the online interviews, neither one, any one of it in our organization. Now I see a complete transformation. No one want to prefer a face-to-face -face interview. Everyone want to go for a, a online interaction. Now this is a change. This is a, a small change. A change where patient uh, who is coming to our central lab, who is coming to our laboratory or maybe the branch center, want this service at their convenience. They want the service to be happen there at place only. They want the service at their home only, that ease, convenience. That's what has been changed after pandemic. So this is something which is inevitable. I mean, everywhere you will find yourself around that change. So. It's, it's a high priority for everyone. It's, it's high priority for the business right now to prepare for that change. 
Now, then there is a business change. There are technology is evolving. There is a customer trends which is reshaping. There is a new market regulations coming around. Now, no one was talking about the employer health, employer wellness prior to this. Now, every organization speaking about the same language. There were no compliances and regulations around the health, health and safety. You have seen those examples right now in your business. The business has totally changed in order to cope those global crises. Now, this change leadership is nothing, but this is something which will navigate organization or the entire business within that course of action. So what role does leadership will play in organization change? And how different leadership roles are there to operate in the business? Now, there are like very specific roles. Now, the first role as a leader that someone will going to play is of a disruptor role. A disruptor where each individual, each person who is in the business will going to challenge, challenge the thoughts, going to challenge the actions, and they will be committed to action to drive that change. Now, this individual, this, this trait has to be there, there in, in every leader right now. So, so when we're talking about the disruption, I think uh, the first thing comes into our mind is uh, 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 damage to the to the business or something. So, but dis disruptions are really, uh, really important for the business. Uh, let's take an example of a healthcare. Now, uh, earlier to this, uh, it was more of a, I don't know, a physical interaction kind of thing. People, the patients were actually uh, easy. Madam, they were liking that someone will come to my place, will going to take samples. Uh, now there are there are different technology coming into the place. The technology helping you to understand the cause, understand the issues of the body, and of course recommend those actions. Now Google has recently launched one of this uh, tool to 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 see that what is happening inside your body. Now, this is a disruption. Now, someone is challenging the existence of other organizations. Someone is challenging the existence of other, other function, other, other system, other business. Now, that disruption need to be there. So, first rule of a leadership is to serve as a disruptor, serve, serve as a, a person who can acknowledge, who can challenge, and then lead that action. The second thing which I see uh, as a leader to work upon and which which uh, which is something related to the planner, uh, which is an uh, individual having that trait of of uh, recognizing the that complete change and addressing with them solution, finding the right solution for the right thing. So, so in our business, uh, we used to do the cap analysis. Now. Uh, we we every time we see what cap analysis is, it's basically the corrective action and preventive action planning for any of the non-conformity that is observed in the business. Now, for us, the CAPA is something which is uh, which is uh, a way of our working. For every non-conforming that we see in our business, we we go for five Y analysis. Okay, this was the issue. Why this is so? Then second Y. If this is then third way, then if this is then fourth way. So you do five way analysis for everything. Now innovator actually need to find that solution with the five ways. The person, the leader has to play the role of an innovation. The person has to play a role of a plan, find the right solution. And the third thing, which is super critical, is actually a most visible function within that uh, business is a communicator. As a leader, it is important and imperative for us. So whatever plan we have created, whatever root cause analysis we have done for any change, whatever things that we have uh, planned to execute. Now, the right way to execute is with the communication. Communicating and coordinating with the stakeholders, with your internal team, external team, and scaling to that operation level. Now, this is a third important role. So, leadership needs to play these three critical roles. The first is, again, disruptor. 
the second is more about the planner and third is more about the architecture okay, communicator so what i believe uh, and this is how we follow in our business um, we have principles we have policies we have structure in place but if these three things are not working in hand in hand so probably the success is not there so any successful change leader need to have these three kind of traits these three rules now there are various examples of business which actually fail to adapt this things uh, for an example um, talk about the blackberry uh, blackberry at that at that point of time it was having around 80 million users and it was something uh, even i had at that point of time um, everyone was fond of having a blackberry in the pocket now when they ignored that touch screen based technology apple has dominated that market now you will find everywhere the apple into the place now this is the case of one versus instance of another example of kodak which was market leader at that point of time for the photographic film they they actually developed the first digital camera but just because of the fear of uh, fear of cannibalizing their photographic film they have actually stopped that their production of and someone is someone else has to step market so there are so many various example there are different example of different organization which actually fail to adapt those changes just because of whatever reason but uh, they are not there in the picture right now so there has to be constant evolution constant change in, into your way of working into your approach so uh, let me talk about more about the what uh, the current business pack, current business trend is uh, so when it comes to uh, the current status of market right now and uh, that is uh, that's very generic i mean it's what i have tried to capture is not related to healthcare but to the overall industry trends and which are specific uh, to the current scenario only it might look like uh, after 2024 these trends may may got change and that's what i'm saying ki uh, what i have prepared with a thought of 10 days before may not be a right fit after 10 days so first thing which is very very prominent right now it it is a rapid digitalization it is all about the accelerated digital transformation there are transformation technologies coming into the picture there are like artificial intelligence there are virtual reality the augmented reality the things of internet the iot which you are talking about cloud computing blockchain those are fast network protocol 5g's and all coming into the picture now these digitalization are actually enabling with us people usually talk about what will happen if everything will going to get digitalized will it going to affect the talent will it going to affect the manpower will it going to affect the human resource but these are all our enablers i mean you have to use it in a right way the generative ai is right now everyone is talking about chat gpt is kind of thing in 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 day to day working even organization are now taking up proactive step, steps to enable those ai functionality in their day to day operations chat gpt i have seen some of the example where organization has have blocked their chat gpt is in their duty to practice but uh, honestly some organization are taking in, in proactively and helping uh, their other system helping their business through those generative ai and this is actually boosting their business productivity so rapid digitization is something which which is a uh, uh, next 2 to 3 years would be a game changing thing in every business scenario you see digitization will going to happen in post pandemic we have seen that even in the terms of transactions um, the digital transaction what is, what has happened 3 uh, years before and now it it's massive in number the second which is more about the price escalation of course uh, with the current business trend uh, business is actually facing lot of pressure maybe from external regulation or globalization or or difference in the exchange rates so this is something which is a ongoing inflation kind of thing. and there are subdued economic growth everywhere so price escalation we going to see every time uh, after uh, maybe uh, this is something which will be going to increase in the next 2 to 3 years but this is a global trend right now everywhere and uh, there are a lot of reasons behind this the third is more about the sustainability now conscious consumer is a new term which is coming very very 
loudly right now. So uh, any consumer is now choosing. So uh, so there are like uh, various uh, uh, reasons why, why consumers choose a brand. So one of the important reasons uh, post-pandemic that what we have seen is the sustainability of the operations. Whether your business is in the right state of environmental or social credentials, whether your business is ensuring the environmental, social, or a kind of different governance. So these are something which every consumer is keeping conscious thought in their mind. So while choosing any brand, while choosing any of the uh, any of the product, they are making they are seeing that this product will not going to impact on a larger scale. So this sustainability is something which is now every everywhere you will find this term coming around the, your your discussion coming around uh, your 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 interaction with some other key stakeholders. So this is uh, a very prominent thing, and uh, and I think uh, post pandemic uh, sustainability, every organization is now working towards the sustainable goals, making the workplace better, making the environment better. Third is uh, fourth is uh, engaging customer interaction. So uh, there is a change in immersive customer experience. Now the process from the lead acquisition process from uh, any customer is getting aware about the brand process from choosing a brand to purchase to finally enjoying those services and goods. So the entire process is changed. The the customer experiences. Is, is exponentially exponentially changed. Their 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 behavior, their patterns have changed. Uh, your your uh, physical interaction, your digital interaction. Everywhere you will find the kind of convenience that a, a, a customer wants. The kind of uh, ease the customer wants. Of course, the price is one of the factor. The features, those benefits, the customer wants. So, experience is something which is which is a, a, a new, uh, I'll say a new strategy for every business because over a period of time, you will find the same technology, same feature, same quality of the product services everywhere with all organization. What will matter, what will create the difference is their experience with that product, the experience with their organization, the experience with, with, the, with the employees of the organization. The experience with with the complete journey, the sales journey. So now it is very prominent and important to have that engaging customer experience. And finally, the talent challenge. It is workforce talent dilemma right now, which is happening. Uh, we have seen the examples of great resignation. We have seen these uh, cases of great quitting, quite quitting, the movements of the people. Now, uh, Employees are actively seeking out um, uh, related to uh, benefits. Employees are, are directly asking the management, the organization. They are quite vocal about the opportunities to be learned and grow. They are quite open about fulfilling work environment. They they want flexibility from remote to hybrid work. They they actually uh, want to see the culture of value oriented culture in the organization. So uh, the workforce talent. Or I'll say the overall uh, the challenge right now is is uh, is quite different what we had seen three years before because uh, in every business when I had said earlier uh, that products will remain the same the technology will remain the same the features advantage everything will remain the same that what will differentiate is only the talent in the organization so talent would be a key differentiator in in the business. And that's how there's a trend which is shaping the complete HR. So there are major, like what I see, the four kind of different trends, which is reshaping the human resource. One is uh, the complete redefining of the workplace culture. Uh, now it is imperative for every manager, leader, HR in the business to maintain that a rock solid rapport with the people, with the business, or everyone in the organization. And it's not only the employee but to the customer also it's it's very important and important that they the individual should have that kind of rapport in the system the second 
which is pertaining to HR is uh, the driving people transformation, which is something in alignment to the people goals, in alignment to the organization goals. Now, there is, there is nothing ca called a different goals for uh, a department or different goal for the organization or different goal for the individual. So every time, everywhere, people are speaking a common language. So now it is transforming the organization, transforming the business to the people. The third, uh, the trend which I see majorly is uh, related to the data-driven decision making. Now people are using those analytics, those metrics to, to manage the performance, the manage the engagement, the satisfaction of the people. They're leveraging those analytics, they're leveraging those those data points for, for either improving the performance, increasing the revenue, or reducing the cost. So this is how things are happening right now. Then, and finally, it is more about the digitalization that we have spoke is the, when, when we say the entire industry is about focusing on the digitization part, so is the HR. So the time to go digital is now. now all those redundant operations in the HR process or maybe in any of the business process will going to get automated. Right. People in HR will not be in HR, they will all go to the strategic HR. So this is how the things are happening around one function, which is HR. Now the world is shaping and so is HR and so is every business. And everyone is finding their new ways and new, new strategies to restructure and shape the organization. Now, these are some, some, some thoughts around the business trend which is happening. And the next slide speaks more about the drivers of the change. When we see the, what are what those key drivers which prominently affecting our organization to change or to restructure, reshape. The fun, first point which I see is very much related to the market condition, which is strategic shift. So there are like uh, seizing market opportunity. When I say uh, seizing market opportunity, uh, competition is increasing. Uh, the opportunities to enter into the market is limited. Now uh, we have to address those challenges. There is the change in the requirement of the market, targeted market. There's a change in the requirement of the product offerings. There's change in the requirement of the business model. Now this, when, when I say this, the complete shift need to be there. And in order to mitigate, in order to uh, leverage also uh, that particular change, I think there is an important uh, role of uh, the leader who is there in the organization to do that strategic shift. Now, as a as as a complete landscape is changing, the competition is changing, so the business need to be so. Uh, Gone are the days when uh, the same strategy was followed from 2015 to 2020. Now, every month, every single day, your strategies are changed. This is the evolution of the market competition. The next is related to the restructure. It's all about the organ. So uh, there are like structural changes happening in the business from, from mergers, acquisitions to those reorganization. Bigger players are now uh, engulfing those smaller uh, or local regional players. This is kind of mergers and acquisition happening everywhere. So uh, for, for a business to grow, it's easy to acquire any, any regional player. So this is happening everywhere in the industry and very prominently into the healthcare industry because healthcare market is very unorganized market. Uh, you will find anyone starting their the pharmacy, their lab, their hospital, there are no strict regulations right now. So now those bigger players, those bigger uh, uh, giants, they will going to take those kind of acquisitions. So those restructuring happening basis of a business need. Uh, smaller business may not have capacity to digitize as per the market is changing. Smaller uh, business may, may not have that kind of investment to, to shape the shape themselves for the future, and that's the reason why you will find news in the in the, in every time like this player has acquired this player or this organization acquired this one. So this is happening everywhere. 
and third is more about the business imperatives and it's, which is something talk about the culture of continuous improvement basically uh, every organization want to try some new initiatives um, they they actually take them new projects they drive the innovation uh, in order to either increase the efficiency or maybe improve the the process and systems so these are either based on their past experience mistakes mistakes which they have done in the business both i mean it can be a failure or it can be a success also so uh, those initiatives are actually part of the change and that's actually the driver so uh, so of course every organization uh, you will find coming up with the new services new products new way of doing things they want to keep ahead of the competition they want to keep themselves um, matching to the need matching to the pace of the business right now so this is uh, very prominently uh, happening everywhere in the business next is more about external ecological factors or maybe i'll say the more of environmental factors those socio economical political reasons behind the change there are like states where you will find those uh, regulations there even in the covid when we have seen uh, the prices of covid here in rajasthan and the prices of covid in delhi mumbai were totally different so uh, there are regulations which is happening which is actually pressurizing the business also at the same time they are regulating those business also uh, to drive their their complete uh, change so those compliance requirements come into that factors uh, when i say that in the healthcare i think uh, and it's very disgusting to say that our status our organ our the complete indian healthcare industry is not that too much rigid to that compliance when you compare yourself with the international bodies i think uh, our standards and their standards are different so uh, again uh, the standards needs to be again revisited and these compliances uh, will going to change the structure of the organization these compliances will going to change the way the business operate and the next is more about the market place it is uh, more about the industry it is more about the the development which is happening basis the technology advancement yeah, or maybe the competitive landscape or maybe related to those emerging trends so these are uh, some key drivers which i see when it comes to the overall uh, change in the business or maybe the organization change now uh, all these changes are either actually happen for three reasons which is development transition and transformation and and you all are aware what development means what transition means and what transformation means now these are to the level of or to the degree of their change uh, is it change happening for for some specific process system is it change happening for the complete state for the complete org level or it is change happening at the organization culture level behavioral level so that's that's how the change uh, happens every every day every time uh so uh, whenever there is a change happening i mean you will find uh, the resistance to the change you will find uh, people who are uh, again uh, positive to the change and also negative to change even when the covid happened uh, the the manpower size of our business was around uh, at that point of time it was around 400 we actually called all our people to to be there in our business that since there is a need Right now, but 80%, 90% people came even after that. 10% dropped out. Uh, the reason of 10% dropping out from that cause was maybe they were not ready to accept that change because they were more they were having fear or maybe they were affected through that global pandemic and all. So. Uh, for whatever reason either it's a environmental health related it may be the profession related but whenever there is a change happening uh, people either will have uh, will going to be the part of that change or they will not going to the part of change as a leader as in as in uh, organization uh, custodian you have to make sure how you how you see that the change need to be in the positive 
way and how people people should see it is in a positive direction. Now, research is research. There have been uh, multiple research around the change and all. So it's only 38% of the people would like to leave their comfort zone and then they, they go for the change. The remaining is, is away from that change. So there are like different categories of people who are uh, part of uh, the change. So uh, we categorize into the four different levels. We categorize, there are there, there you will find people who are strongly into the negative reaction. They, they were going to sabotage your effort. Even when you are saying ki home collection pe jana hai, aapko patient ko serve karna hai, in this scenario, uh, there would be people talking negative about that. This is something which is which is not favoring us. This is something which will going to go against us. So now uh, you will find these these number of people every time when whenever there will be a change. And actually, the important point here is how you can identify those agents, how you can identify those categories of people. So there are people who will going to actively resist. There are people who will going to passively resist, but they will not going to speak. They will be they will be quiet, they will feel stressed, they will be unhappy about that change. And there are certain other categories of people. So the, these two categories, categories are like active resistance cases and then those are passive resistance cases. Again, there are people who are compliant with those things. They will going to take this change positively but may not be with the enthusiasm. And the fourth category, which is the super important for, for every one of us as the change agents. And these are the people who are actually the active defenders and supporters for the change. They are the people who encourage other to drive that change. So when we had this crisis, I think 50% of our team were into that stage where they were enthusiastically supporting the cause. And that's the reason we could able to achieve that 4,000 figure with a team of 150. So that active agents you have to identify, those positive, enthusiastic supporters you have to identify and make them part of your plan. Moving ahead, I think uh, people have resistance to the change and people are, uh, are not accepting change very often. And this is a very common phenomenon everywhere. So why do people resist? So I find out uh, A to G reasons why people resist for the change. The first A speaks more about the altered behavior. It's more, it's it's it is more about the disrupted habits. The reason that change will occur and that will going to disrupt my habit is one of the reasons. So uh, for instance, I've asked someone to. You have to drive your vehicle uh, and uh, think about that day when when you actually had driven a car or someone who who actually drive the automatic uh, automatic gear car and suddenly move to that stick yard. So you will find that individual will, will be facing that difficulty. He would be clumsy when from a shifting from automatic to a, a, a gearbox driven car. Why it is happening? Because sometimes people will see their competency has been threatened. The person who was driving automatic car very, very uh, swiftly may not able to drive the car in a different state. Why? Because he will find that his competency as a driver is threatened. Maybe at a later stage, when time will be there, he may get competent and then uh, swiftly drive that car also. But this is every time happening with the business also. So whenever change happens, it takes time to, to, uh, to acclimatize with the current scenario. So people may not accept change right away, but sooner or later, they actually accept these changes. So the behavior pattern is uh, someone who's writing Every time with the left hand and you ask him to write for the, from the right hand, uh, it would be a difficult. Similarly happens for the people also. Second reason is 
the B, which is talked about the B feeling mind, is more about the uncertainty. People are not, not clear what will happen after that. Because every change brings some kind of uncertainty. I just heard a news about the organization merging with another organization. And this brings a different reaction on my face. This happens everywhere. So whenever there is a, a news which is which brings uncertainty, I will be having that fear. I will be having that feeling. And that will make me resistant to that change. If future is not clear, that will going to create stress for me. Then I'm going to leave. I'm going to lose my control. I, I, will, I will going to lose out everything. I will lose out the focus for the future, for this business and all. So these are the reasons. The uncertainty is one of the reasons why, why people are not uh, accepting those changes. The next is talking about the personality, which is the character traits. So there are like people who are more resistant. There are some people who are less resistant. Now, I don't know, you know or don't know, but there is a big five personality traits. So this was developed by one of the psychologists. Uh, and this is also onward in your psychology trait theory that there are five categories of individual. People from openness to experience, from consciousness, from extroversion to this agreeableness, and then neuroticism. Now, the people who are into the category of openness to experience are more inventive, are more curious. Those categories of people will be going to accept change in the positive way. But, but while the people who are sensitive and nervous may not accept the changes. So individual traits, individual characters matters a lot. The next D is talking about the defeat. It's talking about the people who, who actually have the fear of failure, who actually think that if there would be any change, my performance will be affected. I may not be able to perform under this new system. And there are studies who shows, shows that people who actually feel that they will be able to perform better in the new system are more confident to accept that change. And people with the lower ability to perform after the changes are less confident. So this is a typical phenomena happening everywhere in the business. So uh, whenever there is a the people in, in our business working from last 25 years, those executives they have grown up to that leadership level also. So whenever there is a new technological advancement, we see that kind of apprehension in their mind. They feel like that this technology is something which they are not aware about. What will happen because they may not perform well in this situation. Someone else will go to take that position. Now, this is the fear of failure coming into the mind. Um, next, E, talk about the emotional effect. Let's talk about the personal impact of the change. Whether this change is, is favorable to me or not favorable to me. I'm going to welcome all those changes which is favorable to me at my personal level. For instance, if someone says, Ki, you need to report your, or maybe you are, you are given this responsibility and uh, probably these number of people will going to report to you. Certainly, I'll feel more privileged because I've got that number of team. I've got the team size, this number of team size under me. That brings more power. Or maybe someone asked me, you have to, uh, we are giving this opportunity to change your room from this place to this place, a bigger room, a bigger area. Now, these nicer offices, these biggest office, bigger offices will going to give uh, a favor and it's, it's actually a favoring me, my, myself at my personal level. Now, these are certain emotional effects, these are personal effects, uh, which is actually helping them to accept or resist those changes. Next is more about the prevalence of the changes. Let's talk about the frequency, how much frequent your organization is in, in, in changing the, the structure or changing the shape. What, what is the history of your changes? So is there any positive uh, or maybe a negative story behind any of the previous changes? Or 
your organization is prone to constant changes. आज सिस्टम ने ये कर दिया नेक्स्ट फिफ्टीन डेज में ये कर दिया उसके एक महीने बाद ये कर दिया नाउ पीपल गेट फटी वेन वेन देर आर लॉट ऑफ चेंजेस बिकॉज वेन दे आर एक्चुअली लूजिंग ऑन द फोकस दे एक्चुअली मिस दे एक्चुअली मिस देर 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 फोकस वाइल वर्क इन बिकॉज द प्रैक्टिस कमिंग अराउंड एवरी टाइम एवरी डे सिंस दे आर एवरी वन यू विल एवरी वेयर and this i have seen in my in my business also in previous room i organization also everyone is doing a step down do so someone else is doing his subordinate role that subordinate is doing his subordinate role and why this is happening because everyone is transactionally involved everyone is working on the on on those individual transactions now when there are number of individual transaction and some you ask someone to to add those changes in their working or maybe add those initiatives those those process new systems new technologies probably may not be happening in a positive way because i am already overloaded i'm already doing number of task of my current role and that's the reason the changes need to be very much clearly communicated and their frequency need to be very much uh, stated and specified in the business and last this is important uh, it's more about the grievance of the power loss which is actually the perceived loss of power so uh, if this change will going to affect my power my influence within the organization probably i will not accept it in the right way so these are specific reason which we have seen in our business also in 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 our entire ecosystem why people are not positive about the changes that is happening and if we take care of these points these considerations i think uh, the changes are quite on easy for for the organization to so is all the resistance bad uh, so maybe the answer yes or no i don't know but uh, for me it is not bad actually if people are resisting to those changes i think we need to take it very constructively positively because resistance to any of the change gives a valuable feedback why because when when people are proposing any uh, any resistance any related to the changes that you are having in the business that the system will going to work the system is not going to work you have to you have to listen those those statement you have to listen the people because that would help you to bring all those possible changes in your system all those possible positive changes in your system and that's what i have said a human being is actually driven by his own interest so you have to see how you can make sure this human being accommodating or or uh, accepting those changes and you will find in in most of the organization people who are much committed much loyal to the organization will be more vocal or maybe more uh, speaking out loudly about those those changes the reason is because and that's research and that's how we see is that people who will not going to say loudly to you about those changes they are not resisting it loudly may not be the committed also so how you see that the people who are accepting or not accepting the changes uh, in 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 terms of the the improvisation in your practices or improvisation in the changes you want to implement so for us i think that the people who are resisting the change uh, we should accept it very constructively and take the take it in a positive direction now there are various factors which actually uh, determine the, any any change any transformation so uh, for us i think in our business we keep uh, four important points uh, while considering any changes to happen so one is uh, the duration of the change so we make sure that whether this change need to be gap for this particular period or we can extend it to the later period or maybe we can prepone it so you have to find the ideal duration 
and that's how things need to need to be worked around the business the duration is important the integrity is again important point how you rely on the business how you rely on your people who are working how you rely on the on the communication of your people the third is more about the commitment the commitment not at the top level but at the bottom level also on that change so what what initiatives you are taking to make sure the commitment of the top people to the bottom people are on the same line and the finally which is talking more about the efforts so so anyone who is uh, who will be the part of that change can he go beyond his own individual responsibility to take up that change i think these are the four critical factors which are determining the changes to happen so uh, i figured out important uh, points which which can be considered while managing those positive change and how industry is changing uh, probably these are some 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 of the best points uh, which which actually uh, i have implemented in my business i have implemented in my in my career throughout uh, to implement any of the changes in the business let it be the any rolling out any incentive policy or rolling out any change in the hr policy or maybe any customer specific policy in the business so so one thing uh, the first thing is people and purpose and the second thing is organization and process so people and process need to be at core whatever we do we do for a people and whatever we do we do for a purpose so people and purpose should be aligned and they should be hardwired and integrated to your organization and your systems and your process so nothing will happen without people nothing will happen without purpose nothing will happen without systems and processes so these need to be integrated very well whenever you are managing the changes should keep purpose in the mind why we are here in this business what we need to do so talking about the first step i think uh, that we as an organization have taken in, in whatever uh, kind of initiatives or changes that we have proposed the first thing was more about the planning carefully we have to strategize meticulously we have to clear the plan in the place we have to know when to be done how to be done why to be done in the any of the changes which is taking place you have to outline all the new or changing responsibility of the individual who is a part of that change and the complete timeline for that changes that need to be this this is this blueprint need to be there before implementing any changes and should be very much proactive and and i see it is something kind of kind, kind of risk assessment or crisis management should be clearly in your mind that in case if there would be any possible issue or possible problem that will arise you should have a plan also or responses also these are so that strategy need to be created meticulously planning should be carefully drafted out the next thing which which we as an organization as as and that's comes with our vision uh, our, our values also is talking about the transparency um we have to be transparent as possible uh we have our motto of truth trust and care so when you speak truth you you actually bring that transparency in the system because this is something which is very tricky part because whenever the changes will happen the changes will arrive in in some of the phases not every change you can communicate or us transparently say this to this and you have to maintain the level of confidentiality also but you have to be transparent as possible as with your people you have to be upfrontly sharing the pieces whatever you want to share and explaining their impact and that's why why it is important and you have to start with why as i've said it has already uh, stated in his book uh, start with why because when when the purpose is clear i think 80% to 70% of the of the resistance actually get declined because the people who are in the alignment with the organization already they will be 
hundred percent get more in sync when they are clear with their purpose, when they are clear with why they are in the business. The story of Ishwas, which I mentioned earlier, is a is is something which I see related to this because he was clear about his purpose, his job, and as an organization, we are clear with our purpose, our vision. Now, when when the vision purpose aligned. In the in the at the same level of organization and and an employee, actually um, the changes happen. The next is more about the conveying the with the honesty, so telling the truth, uh, and that's an easy rule when when the positive change is there. If किसी को ये पता है आपके incentive policy हम launch कर रहे हैं ये जैसे positive news. I mean it's very easy to share, but it's become trickier when when there is a challenging circumstances when there is a There is a short-term negative consequences. Now, again, uh, the best route is being honest. The best route is no sugar coating, nothing presenting in overly optimistic way, or or nothing to compromise with the unrealistic outcomes. We have to be very very transparent. We have, to, and that's that's the best part of of the changes. You have to be transparent. You have to clear. Nothing, nothing has to be hidden from from the people who are in the business. Finally, uh, the important point which speaks a lot about uh, the change is communication, and that's what the leadership is all about. The change leadership is. Mm-hmm. We have to keep the open lines of communication with our people. And we have to give proper time to our people to explaining why this is happening, and what. Will it look like after that change? You have to invite the team for open answer, open questions, their feedback. We have to hold those meetings. We have to convey their thoughts. We have to we have to ask ask their feedback in the neutral atmosphere. And that's how you have to create the culture of communication. Communication in both ways, from 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 top to down, from bottom to up. The next is more about. Developing a road map actually, uh, and that's come with the strategy. The first point also, where uh, where you are right now as an organization, uh, how you want to see after some time, and where it is going actually. So point A to point B need to be very much clear, and this change will going to shape the future of your business, the future of your organization. I think uh, this will going to bring bring more. Uh, more sense of alignment, bring more uh, more clarity among the people who are there there in the part of change. Next is training, which is very much important. So whatever like the people who have failure, failure of uh, fear of failure or maybe defeat, they for them I think training is a useful thing. Where whenever there is shift in the technologies or process or or systems, uh, somewhere. You have to train your people. You have to master them for new ways of doing things. So training is important part whenever there is training because most of the time uh, people convey that convey communicate, but they never train their people on the changes. So that's 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 a typical uh, business loss actually. That's a typical uh, gap which we see when whenever there is a change, even it is a smaller change loss. Next is uh, participation of our people. So you have to invite all your team and all your people who are part of those change from, and they have to be given this opportunity to participate in that change. They they have to be, uh, and and that's important for for the business because there are different perspectives. There are like uh, there are different uh, theories. There are different understanding on on each change. So you have to understand that why, otherwise. Why this is important, and uh, if 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 you are not accepting those feedbacks, those thoughts, might be that change may not have that positive impact. So maybe you can miss out some of the points which your some other person may have, or some different perspective can bring into that change. So participation is very much important. Finally, uh, the next point is to talk about the time, which is. Something important because you don't expect to implement the changes overnight because changes in the organization never happen overnight. It is a longer and more longer, more strategic will going to bring bring best results. So uh, you have to give a chance to adjust people for the change, to address the issues, and and 
honestly people are slow in adapting new techniques uh, i'm not sure whether you are aware that qrd uh, this keypad was initially launched to slow the typist speed so for an, whatever change that is happening is happening for a cause and now uh, people are generally slow in adapting new habits we have to make them familiarizing with the new way of doing things and gradually we have to uh, you know we have to phase out those old practices in the business so this is this is a, a time taking process but longer the duration of the change i think the most best option it is next is uh, talking about monitoring and measuring i think uh, this says we uh, this was without saying like uh, we have to consistently oversee oversee the complete process of the implementation of the change you have to keep close eye on those potential issues that may happen and address all those issues you have to define those metrics those those key success indicators for any change to happen uh, and get those relevant feedback from the people from the team who are bringing those change and finally uh, demonstrating that change leadership so from from uh, disruptor to uh, innovator to a planner to then communicator you have to go back to the basics your focus on uh, maintaining and exemplifying the qualities of what change leader is inspire your team demonstrate your strategic thinking be open minded flexible show your team that they can depend on you a strong leader will going to bring a lot of change in the organization so so whatever it is it's it's all depend on the leadership what they are uh, acting in that change or in acting in that situation so uh, in our organization as i already shared like we we, we actually believe in three philosophy whenever there is change in happening and this year 2023 for us was was really a year of uh change for us because we expanded our business to the new territories and areas three things which helped us uh, for the throughout the year with this change was one was the communication second was collaboration and third is continuous improvement we only spoke about three things in in the entire year and actually this has helped not only business also but broader in the broader way this is actually uh change the way of our working this is actually transform the way of working of individual at their at their efforts level at their outcome level and at broader at the organization level so uh, with this i think uh, i'm i'm done with my presentation and uh, i hope uh, this would going to help you uh, saying that uh, i know change is not easy it's not easy for you also to adapt this thing very very uh, in in a shorter duration but trust me um, this is something which helped me in my business a lot for a period of time and particularly when it comes to the uh, industry like healthcare where things are constantly changing every day every every time you will find new things coming up in your way uh, most important is keeping your talent keeping your people in sync with the change so that's make your business successful so uh ashna uh, i think uh, we can go ahead with this open house if things are so yes sir yes uh, so team can you just uh, can you just unmute the students so can uh, so that we can have the uh, nice q and a session with the sir so there are already two to three questions in the chat box so i'll just read one latest which came from vilas sir is outside vendors involved in organizational change he is asking okay so uh, changes is is not pertaining to your internal stakeholder but as well as your external stakeholders also so uh, when i say vendor you you actually mentioned about the outside vendors yes they are equally important when it comes to your business uh, because it's not only employees who need to be aligned with your purpose but the vendor also so how you operate why you operate needs to be very much clear with your vendors also so let me take about the let me take it the take it with the example of our business so we uh, when when the global crisis happened and there was a regulation ki uh, 
the COVID pricing need to be dropped down from 4400 to 300 per test. So this was very difficult. So this was very difficult for us uh, to sustain in that economic pressure. Uh, now we spoke with the vendor, and that's that's basically the agency, uh, which is uh, which is actually working as a multinational company. We spoke with the vendor about that change related to the regulation and our purpose, our commitment to serve our customer better. They have actually helped us and they have actually changed their price, their, their overall uh, the model, business model with respect to the changes that happened in the business. So equally important, your vendor also in everyone, even, even the customer, when the, when the change is happening, the customer is also part of that change. So you have to involve everyone who is part of the change. I hope this answer, this, this suffices the need. Yes, students, you can just unmute yourself and go ahead with your questions. Uh, Ashan, do we have another question? Uh, yes, sir. I, I think they are putting the questions in the chat box. So I'll just read one question. So Prabhu, sir, is saying, hi, sir, I'm from talent industry. I'm still unable to figure out if the post-COVID change is posing a threat or opportunity to our industry. How can we overcome if the change is negative? Okay. So, uh, so I think this is a very common question when it comes to HR. Will uh, uh, AI will going to replace human resource or not? So, uh, when it comes to talent, I think uh, uh, honestly, uh, technology will remain the enabler. Uh, you can't replace human from human resource. Right? So, uh, I understand there is an apprehension coming around, like with the technology, AI is coming into the picture, but uh, this this technology will also require effective human a right talent to drive the technology right so uh, for me i see this more of a in, in terms of a positive side because actually we are leveraging technology in order to achieve that highest potential of an individual so yes uh, I see a positive impact of the change which is happening post-COVID also. Even uh, post-COVID, I think the entire thought process of a talent has changed. The expectation from the organization has changed and the organization expectation has also changed. No one was talking about the wellness. No one was, no one was talking about the culture prior to that. Now, every interview, every interaction, whatever it is happening between the business and the team and the people and the talent, Everyone is speaking out the common language. Like, so I see change in a positive way. Again, uh, um, you have to be positive, be it of any industry, it may be talent or maybe IT or whatever it is. Uh, thank you. Ashna, next question is, is any question? Uh, yes, sir. So uh, Firdos sir is asking, IT and other organization to face attrition at the faster rate. People from IIM are more prone. Okay. I am, yeah. So he's saying I am grad make faster change. Is it necessary to judge a person by talent or institute institutions? Uh, see, uh, the philosophy of uh, right person at right place will become more evident. Uh, so uh, honestly, post-COVID, there was a surge and uh, there was a huge requirement of the talent in the IT industry and, and uh, related sectors. Uh, people and the organization like were giving 50% hike, 60%, 80% hike to the talent and uh, they were getting onboarded on those higher CTC compensation and everything. And this was uh, this was a very um, general phenomena happening so far, and and now th this is a time of optimization, I think. So uh, the, there is a standardization which is happening right now, uh, and that's why you see the rate of attrition is is on the higher side in some of the industries right now because of the global crisis, financial uh, pressure which is happening in in the later part of world. So the change which happened at that point of time has also got some ripple effect, but 
what what i i believe in the future i think there would be immense opportunity because technology is is actually evolving right now also so maybe uh, the kind of platform which we are seeing right now uh, may get obsolete later after 3 years 4 year down the line so so what i believe is that we, uh, even if the technology uh, or, or or the situation will going to change i think there will be immense opportunity for every talent right now everyone uh, to get accommodated but the point again the right person at right place the philosophy of having uh, a person who is right fit for the organization not the best fit right fit will remain remain there in in the business Uh, Ashna, we can yes, go. sir. Yes. Yeah. So there was one uh, concept which was not understood by two of the students. I guess Amartya sir and Anil had the problem. So the concept was be fundamental means they were they were not sure about it, sir. It okay. was I guess in your previous slide. Okay, just one second. You're talking about yeah. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yes. So this was something related to the, uh, I'll say, fear uh, of uncertainty, uh, where uh, people were not sure about what will happen in the future. So uh, this, that's what speaks about this word is uh, about the uncertainty. I hope this uh, suffice. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, any more questions, uh, students? We can take max one more question and then we can wind up the session. Any more question? You can just put down on the chat box, and you can also unmute yourself and ask. I think uh, people are like, I I thought uh, I want to keep them awake, and they're still awake. I hope so. Yes, sir. yes, definitely they are. I think you were very clear with your points and concepts were way too clear. That's why I think they don't have any questions or anything. Uh, Ambikesh, sir, I have one question. Dinesh. Thank you. Yeah, sir, please go ahead. Yeah, my question is how to motivate the uh, employees if they are means uh, afraid to accept the changes. Okay. So, uh, this uh, there is no point of motivation and I, when I said uh, motivation is all intrinsic part. So uh, it comes with the human brain actually. Uh, so human brain is innately wired with those emotions and those emotions actually have the feelings uh, of uh, positive or maybe negative or threat or reward. So uh, when it comes to a positive, it goes with the reward. And why this is positive? Because of the purpose. And I believe the biggest motivation for everyone uh, who is working in any of the field or any of the position, any of the role, I think the purpose of that role is important. Uh, is my purpose clear to me? Is, is this change, uh, the purpose of this change is clear to me and well, I'm aligned with this purpose or not. So all those individuals who are, who are actually uh, linked with those linked with that purpose of, of the change, I think they all will be motivated to the change. And uh, yes, I understand uh, the recognition motivation works a lot. There are a lot many theories of motivation. Uh, honestly, uh, this motivation for me in our business and I have seen in my experience, these are the shallow chain game changers. Uh, they work for a certain time period. Uh, for longer duration, for, for a pertinent, a persistent uh, motivation, I think the purpose is, is something which is the key for everyone. The purpose and then communicating right, rightfully to your team member. Understood, sir. Thank you very much. Any more questions, students? Okay. No, sir, I don't think so. They are having any questions. So uh, before proposing the uh, formal vote of thanks, I would request uh, the students to switch on their cameras and uh, we can have a good picture with uh, Sir. Gosh, now you just need to say before proceeding for <laughs> the next start. Yes. So people are they, awakened. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the student... knows the process now. <laughs> As this is almost fourth week of our conclave. Yeah, so students are already ready with, with their cameras. I don't need to say anything now.
<laughs> nice <laughs> so a uh, team are you ready we can uh, we can have a good picture with sir now yes then ma'am okay uh, so sir it was our honor and privilege to have you for the spectrum that is the virtual conclave of mit asd 2023 uh, thank you so much for taking out your time your insights uh, were Yeah, very really helpful, sir. The uh, the con current industry trends which you shared, uh, also how to manage the change in the organization were truly valuable. So thank you so much, sir, for your time and your. Uh, it was really helpful. Thank you so much. So, so it was really a, uh, 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 I think a great experience for me also because, uh, honestly, uh, it actually helped me to recollect all those things which happened in last two three years with my organization and with me. so probably uh, i'll keep this presentation with me and we'll going to share it with my team also to see that how this can help them in the future so honestly this helped me a lot uh, and um, it was pleasure being here with the with the team of course gen z and and a mix of generation where a uh, lot of learning can also be there and i had seen in 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 the questions that the kind of uh, uh, the question that team has asked So again, a great experience. Thank you, Ashna, and thank you, Bhagishri, for for inviting me. Our pleasure, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.